All right, hello and welcome. Welcome to the Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. We're doing this live and I'm super self-conscious because there's like four, three to four people listening to me on the other end of the line, <laughs> whom you can't hear yet, but you will soon. Um, yeah, so just a couple quick things. Um, God, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, my official birthday stream. My birthday is actually tomorrow, uh, but I didn't want to interrupt drafting week. So yeah, birthday stream today. Uh, we're going to run for about three hours and then uh, we're going to flip it over to John Derek Murphy's birthday stream, my friend. And uh, yeah, um, other than that, we're going to do uh, drafting week this week. So I'm going to be streaming every day. Uh, if you head to my Twitter or the Discord channel, you can vote on what times are best for that. I'm thinking 12 to 3 p.m. is the best right now. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes out for that stuff. Um, other than that, I think we're just gonna head into it. So, let's, uh, let's make that a little quieter. Who wants to introduce themselves? Yay. I will introduce myself. I'm the one and only MC Pepper Pockets. Who's next? <laughs> Somebody go. Hi, I'm Valerie. Hi, I'm Drawny. Right. So wow. these are the awesome people that uh, that I brought along to have jokes and shenanigans with. Um, so yeah, we're going to be playing Microscope today. Uh, a live role-playing game whom none of us has played and only one of us has read all the rules. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> the rudest way to play. <laughs> also known as the best way to play. Yes. The only way. If you can't play the best way, mm -hmm. you have to play the worst way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a good time, guys. I, I have good feeling about this. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, do you want to start, Sam? Yeah, so Microscope is a sort of, well, they specifically want you to know it's not a collaborative game because each player has a lot of individual agency, but it's a game about creating your own history, whether it be a whole new world that's totally disconnected from our own or some subset of our own history. Uh, it's about creating periods that are like, large swathes of time, uh, you know, 500 to 1,000 to maybe more than that kind of time period. And then below that, you have events uh, that are, you know, 50 to 100 years-ish, it feels like, time periods. But these are really flexible. And then below that, you have um, scenes where it's a specific moment in time. Like, uh, you know, this is John F. Kennedy, Kennedy on the phone with whoever the Soviet Union premier was at the time. Uh, and you know you're you're negotiating some nuclear missile missile launch, um, so it's about filling in that history. Uh, in you don't have to move linearly, you know, just because we already know what happens a thousand years from now doesn't mean that there isn't room to slot something in between, you know, the Roman Empire and the Holy Roman Empire. There's a lot of time inside there, um, and basically we're each going to go uh, around in a circle. Uh, one at a time and during each of these cycles where we will each have essentially a, a single action uh one of us will be the lens as you can see here dangs is per currently the lens uh and the lens goes first and the lens goes last so the lens gets to go not just twice as often as everyone else but uh each player normally would only get to um create either a period an event or a scene, but the lens can create any can create two of those things per turn, um, as long as they're nested. So you can create a period and then a scene within that period, if you want, as the lens. And then once everyone is gone and the lens has gone twice, uh, then you the lens moves to the person to the left of the current lens. Which in our case, I don't know. I guess I'll go by the by our little windows in the bottom here. Um, 
and then you start again. Um, and so to start the game, uh, let's see here. Let me just scroll. What we need to play. We don't, well, we got all that. Um, step, so first, yeah, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Brendan. Step one, big picture. Yeah, the big picture. Um, so we're, we want to brainstorm sort of our overview of the history we want, or at least, you know, some rough sketch of where we want to start. Um, so the examples in the book are an, an ancient empire rises and falls, or cavemen at the dawn of time found the first civilization, or mankind leaves the sick earth behind and spreads out to the stars. So there's a pretty broad swathe of things that you can do here. Um, and I guess uh, that's kind of where we should start. Uh, that's what we should create. And I totally don't have a spot for that to write uh, in, but I'm going to create that. Right. Uh, so is, is everyone kind of clear on what's going on so far? Uh, <laughs> mostly, I think. <laughs> so just to, just to reiterate or maybe give a little more clarification, the idea of microscope is we're basically designing a timeline. Uh, and on that timeline, we're going to have uh, various levels of interaction with the timeline and the, the events that are happening. And we're all going to collab like it's not a collaboration game. It's specifically not a collaboration game, but we're all going to kind of work on this timeline and, and design this world through through role playing, through storytelling, through all of whatever we want to do. Um, and yeah, so we start with kind of the, the, the broad and we move down into the more specific as we go. Um, Is the, there a goal of the game? Uh, it's not so much a winning or losing game so much as it is just a game where, uh, a game that you have fun by creating a cool thing. Um, yeah, there's no real winners or losers or anything like that. Um, so yeah. This is not a game for Donald Trump. There are no losers. He cannot hate anyone here. Uh. Harsh but fair. Um, so yeah, uh, does anyone uh, want to say something about a potential big picture for us? I know Sam's got stuff planned. But uh, anyone else got anything? Yes, no, maybe so. <laughs> I would call that a no. <laughs> Based on the uncomfortable side. Uh, does anyone have a favorite period of like real history that we could draw stuff from? Uh, Are you? I do dig the Roman Empire. Uh, but then again, I dig a lot of history, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've been hanging out a lot in the Roman Empire lately in the games I've been playing. Uh, so I'm cool to do that, but maybe something else would be also good. Um, I've also been watching a lot of Penny Dreadful lately, so I'm really into Victorian England right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my mind's in right now, so, hey. Um, all bodices in coal. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much all it was. And fainting couches. Yeah. All right. I'm cool with Victorian England. Um... Okay, so let's just to be... Well, okay, yeah. So we're talking um, like our history or are we talking another world? An alternate Victorian uh, England, Europe, whatever. Ooh, intriguing. That could be fun. What about, I'm, hold on, I'm going to write something in the <laughs> thing, if I can figure out how this text box thing will work. like cogs turning is that a thing <laughs> yep well, i'm actively turning cogs right now whoa my text box is moving oh my god whoa, yeah there it is <laughs> oh there it goes 
So yeah, here's what I wrote. Whoa, someone's fixing it. Uh, on a world colonized long ago, civilization has fallen, but it, or civilization had fallen, but it has managed to claw its way back up to a Victorian level. I'm cool with that. We cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. Dystopian, I like it. Um, oh yeah, okay, so that's actually something I totally didn't mention before, and that doesn't in fact apply to the big picture, but under pretty much every other level of the game, uh, you are generally going to assign a light or dark tone to that. So, it's funny, I was feeling like this was totally a positive thing, like, should have fallen apart, and they finally rebuilt it. But yeah, you could totally cast this as dystopian. So you, you can swing either way for almost anything. But it's you designate that when you create it, um, and then you have to kind of respect that. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So uh, next up, bookend history. So the general idea of our timeline is that it's going to be divided into what we call periods. Um, we're going to set right now collaboratively. We're going to do the first and last period and give them a tone. So yeah, um, so are we, we're starting with them having gotten Victorian era technology? Yeah, so I could totally be super pedantic here and talk about like where you want to designate that, but I'm totally going to say like coal power and like, you know, transition from cottage industry to factory kind of centralized industry. Uh, and that's that's the socio-economic state that we find ourselves in. Except I don't know how that translates to a period. Um, let me think. Uh, I guess other than, well, I would say kind of like the the old ways are being thrown by the wayside. Yeah, I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. Or people are, are, are moving from the country to the city, uh, and, and the, all, the governments of the world are trying to figure out how to cope with it. I don't know if that's I feel like it's a dark period like there's a fog over London okay yeah I would agree with that okay so You said dark, eh? Yes. I pulled the wrong thing. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I think if you zoom in, you can just click on the circle and fill it. Oh, can I? Okay. It's weird. It's this. This is pretty good, actually, about grouping things at zoom levels, so you can create like usable objects. Unless you want me to do it. I got it. I got it. We're good. Okay. Uh, and then just do another quick text box stating that it's the start. Oh, there we go. Cool. So that's the start okay. of our history. Go ahead, Zen. I was going to say, how, how long a period do we want this to cover? Because it should be more than up to today, I would feel like. More than a 200-ish year period. Yeah. That sounds reasonable to me. I shouldn't create both the start and the end, should I? No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, so the end, um, I think it should end the way it starts. Um, I think 
that everyone should be leaving the city for the country. Um, or what about wor- leaving the world for the stars? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Okay, I'm cool with that. That sounds good. Uh, but yeah, leaving... Kind of like if we're starting with everyone coming, then we should finish with anyone, everyone leaving. That's usually how it goes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a light tone. Uh, like hopeful. You know, everyone's excited about their new start. Yeah. Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that that didn't work. Yeah, you gotta make sure. Whoa, oh, you fucked it up. No, I got it. It's fine. Uh oh. We're good. Oh, did we? Weren't we supposed to create a palette at some point? Oh, that's next. Okay, never mind. Ooh, all right. So I'm gonna put it uh, here for now, just like on the side here. Um, everyone is leaving for the stars. Cool. And that. Will- are we, are we talking about humans here? Yes, I thought we were. Are we? Are we? Yeah. We don't have to be. (laughs) Since we're in a parallel world, I don't know. I say they're sentient lobsters. You would. (laughs) You would. I say they're sexy llamas. I like that better. Can, can they both Second be answer. sentient lobsters and sexy llamas? Like, can they just <laughs> like anthropomorphic animals? Or, yeah, both. Llamas with claws. I hate this creature already. <laughs> and I helped create it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they move off our planet. <laughs> no, okay, I, I say they shouldn't be people. Humans. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with the humans. Uh, I'll say humans, but, uh, we'll discuss it during the palette stage. <laughs> there could be robots. We don't know that. Fair. Or pets that are somehow weirdly, uh, combined. Okay. Oh, like a fish with a man's face. <laughs> we call him okay. fish man. Can they be humans, but, but just with lobster claws? <laughs> 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 How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. They got this really weird custom iPad for it. Yeah, <laughs> everything's got to be made custom and special. It, you Dang know, lobster you, people. Yeah, if you were living in like a Victorian era, it'd be really hard to like put on a corset if you had lobster claws. <laughs> well, that's more, obviously the lobster people are not you know like on the same level as people. People, they're the oh, servants. Okay. Right, so they don't get corsets. Got it. No. Okay, okay. They can stay in the colonies. <laughs> they can they can stay in the country. Look, let's they not don't, maybe... get all Belgian Congo on these guys. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. So, um... So, for the palette, the palette is going to be, um... Basically, what we want to include and what we don't want to include. Uh, and every player uh, is going to get a chance to say uh, at least one yes or no. We're going to go around in a circle. Um, you can add uh, one yes or no on your turn. Uh, we keep going around until uh, somebody opts out. Uh, yeah. I think you have to opt out twice. Yes, you're correct. Opt out twice. So, um, who wants to go first? 
Nobody? Someone who actually knows who, how this happens. How this yeah, works. I'd say one of you guys, because I, okay. I need a, uh, I say, an example. Okay, I say what we definitely need. Actually, I don't know if this is right, but what I wanted to say is political intrigue. I don't know if that's a thing we can put on the palette, but it feels like it should be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's fine. A um, what? What's going on there, then? Yeah. I'm right. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, so I'll go next, I guess, and say that I do not want steampunk oh, in what the game. The... Ooh, okay, okay. Ruined instantly. <laughs> it's over. I'm leaving, guys. Bye. I'm, I'm done. I'd drop my mic if it weren't sitting on my desk. <laughs> Birthday stream over. <laughs> uh, so the rules talk a lot about. Um, like this section is not very long, but they talk a lot about, you know, ways in which to uh, kind of change things up, you know, ban things that are expected or perhaps unexpected and uh, keep things that are unexpected sort of thing. So that's what I'm doing. That's fair. Yeah. I actually don't mind that. Yep. All right. Cool. So uh, Val or Johnny, one of you needs to... Give you a yes or a no. Or you can opt out, but, you know. Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Do we have just, like, all the options in the world? Yeah, yes. basically. Um, yeah, but see, that's what's difficult. Is that yeah. we have everything open to us. Ha! Huh. All right. That's I though. Uh, now we are working with, like, a future kind of alternate universe, right? Yeah. Uh... Can I... Go ahead. Sorry. So then, can I say yes to alien life forms? Yes. Yep. No problem. Alright, let's do that. Yep. Uh, keep in mind that anything that's going on this list isn't necessarily introduced into the timeline until we actually introduce it in the timeline. Ooh, got it. Okay. So it's not like necessarily that at the beginning alien life forms exist, but we can introduce them later uh, and have it be a thing. Um, so, you know, there you go. Sweet. Okay, so I think because this is a, um, a certain limited timeline, I would say no to time travel. Okay, sure. Sounds good. I think that's a really good one, and that's actually specifically called out in the rules, because that kind of wrecks the game. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Who can eat a dick. <laughs> that's, that's, honestly, that's all I was thinking about when, when it's about time and time stuff. It's timey-wimey Doctor Who. Yeah. None of that here. All right, sounds good. You got another one, Sam? Uh, can I pass just for the moment? Yep. Yeah, you will have another one. I'm not opting out. I'm just saying I don't have one at this exact moment. Okay, sure. Uh, I am going to say that I want uh, space trains. <laughs> oh, <my God>. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't even know I wanted that. Same here, but now I'm I I, I want it. I'm into it. I'm in Victorian era, right? Mm-hmm. Space trains. So basically, they would be building space trains to travel to the stars in the end. Yep. Yes, because because there is ancient infrastructure left over from the previously advanced civilization. <laughs> uh, and it's like uh, space elevators and a ring around the planet and shit. 
Okay, okay. Hey, trains to space. <laughs> Bo boil that down. I put it. It's already in the thing. Ancient cool. infrastructure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's too late. It's already on the list. No, no, no. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. It's just uh, save the details for the gameplay. Um, so, yeah. Draw near Val if one of you wants to opt out or suggest something else. I kind of thought I about... I have to opt out. Nothing's coming to mind. Okay. Johnny, go ahead. I kind of thought about adding special abilities under special circumstances, but I'm not sure how specific I should be with that. I mean, you don't have to be super specific at all. We could just put special abilities under special circumstances. Okay. And that's yeah, a yes. We, we want that? I believe so. I would like to. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, so do you want to do something? So it's up to me and you again, Sam? Uh, okay. I want no faster than light travel. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. I know how much you hate FTL. Terrible scourge. <laughs> um, I want no monarchy. Ooh. Nice. So specific. <laughs> Brexiting from space. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Brexit in space! Everything must be made relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Alright. So, if you opt out again, Val, we're done. If not, we continue. Alright. Um, can we say special abilities but no magic? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Alright. Alright. You got something, Ronnie? Do I have to? No, you can opt out. <laughs> I have one yes and one no. Why okay. No? So you can say one. <sighs> hey. Kind of, kind of the only things I wish to have in life. <laughs> it's just special abilities and fun travel, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um. I. I don't have any idea right now. Okay. You're going to opt out then? I guess so, yeah. Okay. Sure, no problem. You got one more, Sam? Um, I don't have one right at the moment, no. Okay. Um, I had one, but I forgot it. <laughs> uh, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Oh, uh, no nuclear energy. Okay, so all matter flies apart and there's nothing but helium atoms? I meant more like no nuclear reactors or uh, nuclear bombs. Well, don't you think that's kind of inevitable? If this is a no magic universe? I mean, maybe. What do you think? I mean, if we're reaching a point where humans leave the planet, you kind of have to have that. You can't have not discovered it. I suppose. And, and I did yeah. And I did also say no steampunk, so that kind of leaves me in a oh, weird... Yeah, yeah. With no nuclear energy, but no steampunk. You're not allowed to use coal. Everyone's just burning wood forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Electricity... <laughs> It could How be do you generate that? Damn powered? Uh, yeah, you're right. It's hydroelectric world. Okay, <laughs> actually, shit. How about that? The planet has... And I'm just going to bypass your ridiculous proposition. Uh, <laughs> sure. Has, um, the planet has... I could spell... Enormous... Uh, um, waterfalls. Unnaturally huge waterfalls. Ooh. Okay. 
So there cool. is a, a preponderance of um, hydroelectric generation. Nice. Okay. So, so we're going to have hydroelectric space trains. I love it. Oh, damn. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited, you guys. Yep. That seems to be the way it's going. I'm down with that. All right. So, um, Valadrani, you get one. Uh, I have an idea. Okay, go I, ahead. I, I kind of want to um, add to that whole water thing and think about that there are more fluids in this world that people can actually live off of. <laughs> okay. That sounds interesting. It's not only water, but also like other colored uh, fluids or something that people can live off. Oh. <laughs> uh, so how would we describe that? Um... Alternative on other uh, liquid chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. Which I assume would be methane or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um... There'd be others. Yeah. Maybe this planet is Titan with hydrocarbon lakes of ethane and methane. <laughs> why why is everything a reference to somebody's story? I I I don't know. It's just the way that it goes. First Sam with his lobster it. people and now you with your hydrocarbon lakes. <laughs> everything just boils down to hydrocarbon lakes. Yeah. This is all, what was that book, James Hogan, with the the Coda Life Makers, where the robots crash on Titan and they, like, evolve into a robot medieval empire? Oh, man, I've never heard of that, but that sounds fantastic. He's got this whole bit at the beginning where he's like, well, yeah, so each of them only gets half the code for making a new one because there's not enough memory left because they're damaged, and so they got to pair off. And <laughs> <laughs> Right? It's like, oh, I see what you're doing here. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right, I'm definitely gonna gonna look into that. It's too bad he went insane later in life and did not believe that the planets are as far apart as they actually are. Oh, that is a shame. <laughs> Lightning formed the Grand Canyon. Come on, it's possible. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so uh, do we have another palette proposition? Uh, it's up to you, drawing. Uh, no, that was drawings, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you have one Val, otherwise we're gonna flip over again. Um, I mean this seems like a pretty good list already. Me. Okay, cool. Uh, so you're gonna opt out then? I believe I am. All right. Um, anything else, Sam? No, I'm out. Yeah, I don't got much else either. I wanted to think of something cool with top hats, but I couldn't. Cool. No steampunk. <laughs> That doesn't mean they can't have top hats. No, only bowlers. Pork <laughs> <laughs> no. pies and bowlers, so and that's it. Maybe add that. No top hats, only right. bowlers. Fine. <laughs> Done. All right. So I th that's probably about it, unless you have anything else, Ronnie. We'll, uh, we'll go to the next uh, phase. I just had one very crazy idea, because one particular person has a very interesting photo. I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> no, but it was just weird artist's mind. Um, I, I just have a question. Can people from chat also add something? Uh, yeah, if, I, I'm cool with that if we're all cool. Um, yeah, okay. Not a problem. I don't Sounds know like if, meme. if anyone is, uh, if anyone wants to, but yeah, it would be cool to engage chat as well. Ever I the mean... streamer, Drani, ever the streamer. <laughs> hey, you are on Twitch. <laughs> That's true. That means you, Rogue Horse 96 we're looking at you right now. Uh, <laughs> Samantha is uh, here somewhere as well. Deep Dark. <laughs> um, I just wanted to call out a rando 
for no reason. That's man. You shouldn't call out lurkers, man. It's bad form. So Tough. I've been so I've been told. So I've been told. Yeah. I'm just gonna open the viewer list and start calling them out, just one after another. <laughs> <laughs> Until someone comes up with something. <laughs> um, Bueller. 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 Nice. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> next we go to the first pass. Um, uh, so basically, all group decisions are over. It's now only individual decisions. Oh, snap. So there does not have to be a consensus from here on out. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anarchy. Um, so yeah. Basically what we're going to do now is we're going to create either a period or an event each. Just to give us something to work with as we move forward in the game. Um, yeah. So I mean that's pretty much the gist. <laughs> uh, all events have to go inside a period. Um, Actually, this would be a really good time, Sam, to kind of give us a little bit of detail about the uh, the differences between period events and scenes. Okay, well, that's it's pretty simple. Um, I mean, not only is it a difference in time scale, because uh, events are things that take place over months or years or decades, theoretically, um, whereas a scene is real time it's happening now we are there each of us will play the part of a specific character um so we're all in a room or at least in direct communication with one another in a scene uh, and that could be you know general a general on the battlefield napoleon ordering his troops uh to march into moscow and fucking it up or it could be uh you know uh president of the united states on the phone with the premier of the soviet union um but or it could even just be people in a village that are nearby the action discussing the, the hearsay news of the broader world but scene is very specific and um an event is, is the bigger picture in in which the scenes take place yeah so periods are really big they encompass long periods of like long long times they're big big world changes almost uh though they don't have to be you can slot them in kind of wherever uh events are, are smaller uh kind of a specific thing like a war or certain uh an election or different things like you know it's smaller scale and then scenes yeah even smaller um so yeah we're all going to make a period or an event there are no scenes in this first one or we're going to get into that later um, but yeah, so we all get to make either a period or an event. So who wants to go first? Maybe, maybe volunteers. No, I'll go. I'll, I'll go. Okay, cool. Uh, so I want to make an event underneath the very first, the start scene. Okay. Uh, and I want it to be, um, the, the, yeah, invention of the steam engine. Let's call it that. That should be the start of all of this anyway. Okay. <laughs> Just to call it straight out. And this is what motivates people now that you can build factories and have local power and not just a horse dragging a thing. Uh, and, and this is what's pulling people into the city. Okay. Um, is that a I, light or dark? I want it to be dark. Okay. I want it to be abandonment of our pastoral history and everything is just black clouds of soot. All right. Oh, snap. That's deep. So, you want to select this. Oh, no. What have I done? You goofed. Apparently. There's stuff here. Oh, it's all grouped together. What have you done? <laughs> I, I don't know. It... I got it. I got it. We're good. I fixed it, okay? So, yeah. OK. 
god. Do you want me to type it in? Yes, please. I don't okay. know. My computer is being weird. I went up to Arial 200 font somehow. You have this? That's a problem. <laughs> Quite the problem. That's, that's a problem. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, um, who wants to go next? I can go next. Okay, you can make a period um, or an event. Uh, I like, uh, I'm gonna make an event. Um, I like the idea of an election, like a very significant election okay. as a light event. Okay. Do I have to say where? <laughs> uh, you should try and give us clear details. Okay, um, let's go for around the midpoint of our timeline. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Um, you have to create an event underneath a period. Ooh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So I guess we need more periods then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and keep in mind that uh, anything that we create, uh, at least until we get to scenes, uh, should have a clear resolution. Uh, no open-ended questions. Okay. Um, how, how broad can periods be again? They can be pretty Confused. broad. Okay. Uh, like, like Sam was saying, like, Theoretically, the Roman Empire can be a period. Or like right. the classical Greek era. Or, you know, the Second World War could be a period. Mm -hmm. But the Second World War could also be an event within a period. Like it just, it depends right. on what you're dealing with. Right. So if I just say a wartime period, that's not specific enough, right? No. It is not. All right. Okay. Well, what if it was, you know, you could have like a, a period of a specific kind of wars that happen like more than one of them. Yep. Like religious right. wars or nationalist wars or whatever. I'm not supposed to help you. Oh, my God. It's, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm a little lost in space here. So mm -hmm. the help is appreciated. <laughs> As maybe our, our, our characters or whoever we're sending in space will eventually be lost in space. So there we go. It's all fitting. Danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> my arms right now. Yeah. What What happens to the stuff in a pellet? Uh, you can you can use that to create things. Um, okay. But it doesn't have to be used right away. Okay. Uh, that helps. <laughs> Okay, in terms of a period, can we have a space race? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect. Sweet. Space uh, race period. Light or dark? Um, let's, let's go with light. Okay. Since, uh, give it a little sense of hope in there, you know, okay. some national excitement. Sure. We choose to go to space and go up the elevator and do the other things this <laughs> decade, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Bravo, bravo. You've been practicing that a lot, Sam. I love that speech. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> the way he pronounces things is out of this world. Oh, he's great. That's great. Uh, space race between whom? Uh, between, well, I mean, are, are we going with countries or? That's, Could be. That's up to you. Let's see. Huh, let's see. Let me, let me look at this palette here. Um. Huh. Hmm. Well, I guess I guess if we go for between like countries that could play into the political intrigue, maybe. Absolutely. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. 
Uh, Let's go for for a nationalistic space race. Perfect. The traditional space race. All good. Nationalistic space race it is. There you Woot. go. Okay. So uh, you can go, Johnny, or I will go. Well, in terms of people being able to make space race, mm. we would have to have some sort of vehicles that would have to be built or invented, I guess. Yep. So, um, I think that that could also, since people are or have invented steam engine, that could also be an event. Uh, s since we want them to be kind of, uh, what was it? Hybrid engine stuff? Uh, hydroelectric, actually. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> They just build a big boat and they go straight up the waterfalls. <laughs> yeah. So, what event are you trying to create? Uh, something like uh, founding of the first space vehicle. Sure. Sure. Will that be under the Nationalist uh, Space Race? Hmm. The thing is that there's probably not a period for that. Because in order to have a space race, you would probably have to have more than one. <laughs> not necessarily. One vehicle, I mean. Well, the first vehicle could be the, the spark of their space race. Okay, so we can put it in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, with the, the, the space race that we know to the moon, there wasn't an actual working... There really wasn't that much shuttle stuff going on at the time. Like, it kind of came out of it, right? Well, I mean, the, the whole Sputnik thing was what started it, right? Is right. It, if, they can put a, if they can put a sphere with some tails on it into space above the United States, they could put a missile there. And so the U.S. said, well, we should do that, too. I mean, Sputnik was the, the shell of a nuclear bomb hollowed out with a radio jammed inside of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And interestingly enough, on a side note, uh, Sputnik going up actually uh, invented is, is the thing that caused uh, them to invent GPS through, uh, through triangulation. Huh. It was crafty Russians. It wasn't Russians, it was actually Americans, but yeah. Well, the Russians had their own, they have the Glasnost. Oh, right. Fair enough. But yeah, uh, basically this professor, and this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the story because I think it's relevant to kind of what we're doing, just to give you context. Uh, this professor uh, heard Sputnik, like you could hear Sputnik's beeps, right? And so you, by detecting those beeps, you could uh, figure out, because you know how far it is from, from the Earth. So using the beeps and the distance of the beeps, you can actually figure out, you know, based on a known distance, how far away it is. Uh, and then they use that technology in order to make GPS. Um, and also, is also one of the ways in which radar was developed. Uh, through the early days. So yeah, there's a lot of crazy things. So Drani, did you want that to be a light or a dark event? Light. Light, okay. So, 
Sam, why can't I edit this? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like you're racist. <laughs> racist against blocks of text. You're doing it right now. I can see you doing no, it. No, I'm over top of it. Are you? You're. Oh, you have to select the cursor to select things. You can't select text boxes with the text oh, tool. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, you want to, but you can't. <laughs> so weird watching you do it seven seconds ago and simultaneously. Yeah. You have the stream open? Yeah. Okay. So there we go. There's an event. Uh, what do I want to create? Um, I am going to create a uh, worldwide energy scare period. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Madly dark. <laughs> Oh, so much better. I got it this time. <laughs> Worldwide energy crisis. Oh. Cool. I'll put that right here. Keeping in mind that there is totally room to fit things in between any period or event. History is, um, history uh, has space for everything, <laughs> as it were. So, uh, on to the next step, Sam. So, the next step is basically we actually start playing. Um, so this is where we're gonna start going uh, like in, a, in an order. Um, but first, uh, we need to decide who's going to be the lens. And the lens is the person who decides the focus of this particular round. Um, uh, and so, the, so what that means is you have to decide what area of time or what periods or events we're exploring specifically, and we all have to kind of stick within that. Yeah. Uh, and, correlates around a certain, certain topic, basically, right? Yeah, um, and then and then the turn essentially proceeds uh, by the lens first creating either a period, an event, or a scene. Uh, and they can, like I said before, they can do two that are nested if they want to do that. And then when they've done that, uh, control passes to the next player who can create a period, event, or scene. And then the next player, the next player, until the end, until everyone's gone. And then the lens gets one more go. And then the the lens passes to the next player. So, so got it. yeah, we we get on we get on that. Any explanations needed? I think I understand what we're going for. Okay, cool. You good, Ronnie? Uh, I think uh, when someone else starts, I will probably see how it goes. Sure. How it's supposed to be. I nominate Brendan as the first lens. I second that nomination. Okay. Yep. I, I accept. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> okay, good. We're all in agreement. <laughs> I feel like I've been voted class president. <laughs> Most likely to proceed. <laughs> hey. -o. Okay, so I'm gonna write this down. And then, what order do you want to do it, Sam? What do you mean? Oh, I see. Um, I think we should go according to our little windows. Okay. So you uh, draw an eval me. Okay, that way. Gotcha. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go first. And I am going to create, um, so I'm going to choose the focus. 
And I want the focus to be space trains. <laughs> cool. Well, we're clear on that. <laughs> yes. So, uh, in order to do that, uh, I'm going to create an event and a scene within that event. Uh, so I'm going to create the first space train is invented um, as being different from the first space vehicle. And I'm going to create the moment Dr. Zeitgeist discovers that space trains are the optimal vehicle are the optimal vehicle to travel the stars with. <laughs> All right, Dr. Zeitgeist. <laughs> Is that supposed to be German? No. <laughs> no Germans ever said that. Mm -hmm. That's not a real word, word at all. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. This is like Professor White. He's, he's, you know, a robot man, not a white man. <clears throat> you got to work on that. German pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, can you do the... Is that a period? No. Uh, an event in a scene. Okay, where do you want to... What do you want to put those under? Uh, after the first space vehicle is invented, the first space train is invented. Okay. And... and uh, What's the tone for your event? Uh, my event is going to be light. No, sorry. My event is going to be dark, and my scene is going to be light. Okay. So, um, in the effort of kind of teaching the game... Uh, I am going to make this a regular scene, so I'm going to ask a question, and we're going to attempt to answer that question by playing characters in the scene. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. My question for this scene is, why are space trains better than any other vehicle type to explore the stars? Well, they run on the on the pre-existing rails of the space elevator, right? So they're very efficient. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna set the stage. Um, we're gonna be in Doctor Zeitgeist's laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chuckle away. Chuckle away. I, I will. I will always laugh when you say that. Okay, just, just move on. Um. So I'm going to play Zeitgeist. Uh, going around the table to the right, uh, you get to pick a character. So, Jorani, pick a character. You can make them up. Like, you can play whoever you want. Uh, but these are going to be important people in kind of the, the grand scheme of our history. So, or I guess they don't have to be, but... So much pressure! Pressure. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Do I have to be able to fulfill that rule, that role? Uh, well, you're picking the person you're playing. Um, oh God. Well, you can also um, play as sort of a Greek chorus type character uh, that they usually in this game refer to as time. So you're some person or collection of people uh, who are trying to put pressure on the scene to end. So maybe you're Congress trying to push through a bill. And so there's only 12 hours until they have to do that or something. Oh. I kind of thought about being a crazy scientist that is working on the project. Sure. 
Sounds good. What's your name? Well, since we're going German here, <laughs> I'm gonna be. <laughs> Host. Host. No, Host. H O R S T. Host. <laughs> That's like the ugliest German name there is. <laughs> I love it. All right. I love it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, who are you going to play, Sam? I am Gen uh, Major General Von Metternich. <laughs> uh, or whatever the German equivalent of that rank is, um, who is deeply opposed to the development of the, the space trains because it will take resources away from the military. Okay. Val, who do you want to play? Um... Can I be Dr. Zeitgeist's assistant? Yeah, no problem. What's your name? Uh, Luna. Let's just go with Luna. Okay, last name was Luna. All right. Yes, Luna only has one name. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> like a star. <laughs> yeah. She used to be a pop star before she became a scientist <laughs> assistant. <laughs> just kind of stuck with her. Okay. Slipping through. Um, so just before we start, we have the question. Uh, set the stage. We're going to uh, be in Zeitgeist's lab. Uh, we've, we've kind of established who our characters are. Uh, and last thing is reveal thoughts. So we state one thing that our character is thinking about the un upcoming scene. Uh, so we start to the right of the player making the scene. So we start with you, Drani. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, my scientist is obviously really trying to make this work to uh, to become famous, I guess. Okay, makes sense. To you, Sam? Uh, well, I kind of already said, I think, what my character wants, which is to, you know, shut this down, this this mad science. Okay. Sounds good. Assistant Luna. Uh... <laughs> this is a tough one, guys. Um... Uh... Man, so many things that I could be thinking. So many thoughts. Um, When's lunch? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm thinking that I just really am excited to get to space. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so. Uh, Zeitgeist is thinking that he really wants he really wants to discover uh, what the alien race left us, but he's been forced to work on this stupid space travel project. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Uh, aliens space travel project. So, uh, when the scene starts, uh, Zeitgeist is going to be there with Luna, uh, and we're going to have the Major General and Dr. Horst to uh, <laughs> enter the scene later. Um, so, yeah. Um, God, I'm always. I'm always weird when it comes to role playing <laughs> so <laughs> do you want to start yeah I? well i'm starting because you're not in the scene yet <laughs> mine <laughs> i could come bursting through the door you don't know 
<laughs> you just slap him. <laughs> cool aid man busts through the wall. Uh, so Zeitgeist turns to Luna and asks, when's lunch? <laughs> <laughs> and Luna says, no, we're so close. We have to, we have to keep working on this. Lunch can wait. Can it though? I mean... I, l listen, if you're really hungry, we can just like go and grab some quick sandwiches and eat them at our desks. I mean, come on, we gotta we gotta keep working on the space train thing. Like we're getting somewhere here. The phone rings on your desk. It's like a rotary phone. Ring, 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 ring. Hello. <laughs> this is uh, General von Metternich. What are you doing over there? Your uh, project ready yet? I, I mean, we're we're getting there. We're we're nearly there. Uh, okay. Uh, this is an unscheduled uh, inspection. I'm going to arrive in five minutes. You better be ready. Uh, well, damn. Well, I guess we're going to have to wait until later for that lunch. Uh, no kidding. Uh, can you uh, can you go to the back room and take everything that's on my desk and put it in a closet? <laughs> okay, you're the boss. <laughs> Why can I ask? Uh, let's let's just say that this guy is a little loony, and uh, he doesn't like it when people talk about aliens. And oh. my my monthly ufologist magazines might go the wrong way. So. All right, okay, you got it, professor. It's ufologist. Thank you. All right, <laughs> they're, they're ufos. <laughs> UFOs. Um, so I go and I put things away on the desk. Okay. So it, it takes me a little bit because I'm looking at things. Right. I'm intrigued. Uh, I comb my hair. You show up, Major? I clean off my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> the Major bursts um, through the door. <laughs> <clears throat> I hope you're ready. This is both a safety and procedural inspection. Uh, well, so what's the general safety procedure for scientific research projects, General? Uh, we have to monitor how much power you're consuming so as not to endanger the civilian population uh, for brownouts, and we have to reserve a specific amount of power for military uh, base that you are based on. Right. Uh, does the fact that I'm only running two computers matter? You're already using enough power on those two computers. It could feed 20 men-at-arms uh, for a month. With all due respect, sir, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Unbelievable. Who is this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll keep my mouth shut. I'm, I'm Luna. I'm an assistant. Don't mind me. Just, she, she's know, got three PhDs. How many do you have, General? I have a G E N E R E A L. How about that? <laughs> wow, that's very that's impressive. impressive. Very impressive. I bought that <laughs> title myself. Did did you now? Did did you? Good now? job. Look, Professor Zeitgeist, it, it just doesn't feel like you're you're in this for the, the good of the nation. You you're really just not respecting the spirit of the times. Really? Yeah. Like I have I have this feeling that there's so many things we don't know about what's going on out there. And what what about what's going on down here? The <laughs> the the Franks Franco men are a constant threat. And, well, and, and they're trying to get to space as well. We don't want to let them do that. Well, we wouldn't want them to let to make any discoveries before us. I, I get that. We wanna we wanna know about the aliens first. Oh, aliens! Unbelievable. There's no aliens. aliens. Then who oh, built the the friggin' tracks in space? Look, nature works in mysterious ways. <laughs> I, I I think what 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 Doctor Zeitgeist is trying to say is that it's very important for us to to see what's out there. You yeah, know, it's, it's, exactly. It's someday we might we might need another planet, maybe. All right, well, mark my words, if this enterprise is a failure, I will, or if this enterprise is a success, I will resign. This is ludicrous, a total waste of resources. All right, I got me some motivation. 
<laughs> um, that sounds like a deal to me. So, uh, Dr. Horst wanders in. Oh, God. <laughs> you can do it, Johnny. Uh, oh, God. I want to be the dog just enough. <laughs> um, Horst leans to leans to Zeitgeist and says, I think we have a problem. What 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 problem? Oh, you mean other than this guy? I I think we, we might be running low on energy. Oh that's that's not good. <laughs> energy? Mm. How many say energy? <laughs> She's talking about energy. She's talking about energy <laughs> drinks, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh uh, nerds. I'll, I'll go get more at the store. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks, Luna. I appreciate that. That's what assistants are here for. I, that's what my three PhDs has led me to. Well, you know, you fulfill your purpose. I'll fulfill mine. <laughs> there you go. Um. So. Benedict is now in a corner, uh, frantically dictating a, uh, a telegraph to one of his aides. He's surrounded by aides. It, okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I kind of quietly lean in and whisper, but but no, but like, what's really happening with the energy? Like, what's what's going on? Yeah. What's what's the problem with the energy, Horst? I didn't think that far. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wait. Let me think. Oh. oh God. Can I ask a question about this scene? Sure. It's out of character. How far? Along the development of the space train, are we? Uh, I would say that we're probably um, fairly advanced, but we need a significant discovery in order to make it work. And that discovery okay. is going to be why they're efficient. Got it. So... Uh, so yeah, worst. Uh, what's 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 wrong with the energy? Are the waterfalls running out? Like, I thought we were pretty much good to go. I think that we probably need an alternative to the water we already have. Oh yeah. Uh, what 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 do you have in mind? I kind of heard some rumors that people. Uh, on another planet have uh, found some source of energy and uh, it's some kind of fluid that we should probably test out because it's supposed to be very powerful. Oh, okay. So like, what is it? Is it like Gatorade? Like, what are we, what are we talking? Hmm. It's kind of like a fuel, um, but I, I don't know about the specifics. It's, it, I, as I said, it's just a rumor, but it could be the solution to our problems. Okay, I'm I'm intrigued. Can you can you call them on the phone? Can can you get me some research? I need I need some some studies in order to to figure this stuff out. Uh, I see what I can do. All right, all right, cool. I mean, alternate energy sources, huh? Huh. Luna, look, like, uh, what did you say the uh, space rails were made of again? Uh, the space rails, they're made out of... Um... Rears and metal. <laughs> Plastic. <Sorry? laughs> no. Ignore him. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, they're, they're, they're made out of, out, of, out of some kind of space uh, iron that we've never seen on this planet, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> For the record, any space iron I'm calling steel. Uh, Perfect. You got it. Man. So wait, I'll note that down. Good. Good. Thank you. Space iron is now steel. It's in our logbook. Good. The discoveries just keep on coming. Mm -hmm. Um So have we determined whether or not this metal is conductive? I believe it is. Some re some of most of our research shows that it is yes. Okay, so uh, we 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 haven't quite done enough research, but preliminary reports say that it is. 
Okay. That's that's good. That's good because this new fuel has got me thinking. Mm-hmm. If we could figure out some way to use electrical charge uh, in order to power these rails, like cause them to conduct, mm-hmm. we can use the fuel's energy to float the train down the rails. That's genius. I think that it just might work. Wait, you said no you said no magic, right? So I can't use magnets? No, it's <laughs> goddamn it. You're banned from your own screen. <laughs> yes. We shall use magnets. Magnets? Yes, mm. yeah. Uh I saw this, I don't know. Here, General, come here. What, who, who summons, what do you want? I take the bars off his coat. Oh my God, who, why are you doing? <laughs> take a battery, like charge it, put a little metal ball on top, it floats. I'm like, oh my God. we what need to do this. Like? We need to do this, but in a grand scale. We don't have time for this. I just received word, there's a, uh, uh, Austerland attack on our uh, on one of the the bases of the sky pillars. Let's call it. Uh, they've they've damaged the shell. There's sparks flying out of it. Fires all over the city. Why are you wasting my time here? I have to leave. <laughs> if if this was all happening, why did why why did you even? It just happened. <laughs> Okay. Did you, not, did you not see my page come flying through the door with a with a, a, a pile of documents? Uh, no. Absent-minded professors, all of you. Maybe. We're scientists, man. Are you mumbling about <laughs> over there? Okay. Uh, I think that's the scene. I think we're good. I think we've established <laughs> why why things have happened. So the answer is they run on space elevator rails using magnetism. Magnets. Yes. The um, the insane clown posse would be very happy about that. Yeah. Everyone heard that magnet song, right? Right. No. Oh, okay. No idea what that is at all. They 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 like. The Insane Clown Posse is this ridiculous band, and they released a song called uh, oh, Miracles, I think, and it's basically all about, like, science and it, how miraculous it is. And at one point, there's just a guy who goes, Magnets! How do they work? And it's great. To be fair, I am wearing my Juggalo face paint right now. Oh, well then, there you go. You know what I'm talking about. I think next time I have to pick a... An easier character. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it. the daughter or the dog or something. Someone <laughs> who doesn't know anything. <laughs> I'm just going to play a golden retriever in every scene. <laughs> <laughs> the timeless retriever. Yeah. Or a llama, just for decoration. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, this nice. is a, there, that's what we should have specified that um, earlier in our palette. Llamas as decoration. <laughs> Just everywhere. That's that's how they roll in this world. <laughs> yeah, and one time they're gonna take over in the world. <laughs> <Okay, llamas. laughs> Alright. Uh so yeah, that's my turn. Uh we're gonna go to Drani next. Oh god. Uh you get to make history. Oh god, so much responsibility. <laughs> what's our what's our focus right now? I've forgotten. Uh, space trains. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're writing that down. Okay. Uh, Do you want some time to think about it, Johnny? 
because uh, we're about an hour and a half in, so I was thinking of taking a five-minute break. Uh, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just if it makes it easier, because we, we, yeah. we probably should take I, a break. That, that would probably be nice. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a break. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, let's uh, let's do uh, let's do a nine minute break. Come back at six thirty, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah. Sweet. You cool? You cool with that, Johnny? Think about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going to break. Sweet. Yes.